<laughs> Don't be nervous. <laughs> All right. Hi, welcome to the Finding Harmony podcast. I'm your host, Harmony, and I'm here with Russell Case. Harmony, I just wanted to, to say I did some cooking this week. You did, actually. I did, did some cooking. Yeah. I tried to make uh, Nepalese momos. You tried. We did not have the correct ingredients, though, did we? No. As it <laughs> turns out, you should never, under any circumstances, ever use coconut flour for anything. It is absolutely useless. <laughs> oh, look at this lady shaking her head. She knows. Oh, look at this <laughs> idiot. <laughs> It doesn't make dough. No one told me that you doesn't the coconut flour doesn't make dough. It was so bare. But we have the lady who tried to help us make momos yes. on air with us today. I'm so excited. Um, I don't. I don't want Bobita to. Shreshta. Do you know how to how say her say? name? Shreshta. So. Shreshta. Shreshta. Yeah. Which one of us is more right then? Me. <laughs> Can you say it again? <laughs> Babita Shreshta. Shreshta. That's right. That's right. Oh, that's that's right. Babita Shreshta. <laughs> that's very nice. Wow, Babita. Yes, and you Namaste. are Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> Namaste. <laughs> right now you're in Nepal. Yes. I'm in Pokhara, mm. Nepal. You're what? Pokhara. Pokhara, Bokhara. Nepal. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Tell us about Pokhara. Pokhara. So it's the... Uh, uh, second biggest city of Nepal, mm-hmm. but it is also the big city and the mountain city of Nepal. So a lot of people who wants to like, I especially in yoga, they mm. visit uh, Pokhara, and then uh-huh. people who are really into mountain, they also visit Pokhara. Uh-huh. So you guys need to Google it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh. Pokhara. It's beautiful. I just want to say that for the listeners at home who haven't seen this book yet, this is an absolutely gorgeous book, and it's it's wonderfully uh, it's it the it's wonderfully uh, designed, and I I think you might be the graphic designer for the book. We will have to ask you about that. It's That's wonderfully amazing. beautifully designed. It's called and Plant Based Himalaya. Himalaya. Yeah. Which one is correct? <laughs> um, well, in Nepali, we say Himalaya. And then oh. in English, because of the accent, it's Himalaya. Oh, yeah. <laughs> same, same, but same, different. Same, same, but yeah. different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I have to say that a, a piece of me as a painter and an artist is fundamentally jealous of this. This is an, so an extraordinary achievement to produce and and publish uh, a big beautiful book like this and it's something i've always wanted to do with my own painting but this is amazing an extraordinary achievement and i just how do, we want to know there's, how it all came to be yeah there's 38 vegan recipes from your home country of nepal that you created or shared with these gorgeous photos And I actually saw this book in chapters. This is what I wanted to tell you. I saw it in like chapters. Your bookstore, your local bookstore. When I was there one day. Chapters doesn't exist anywhere else. It doesn't? No. Okay. It's like a Barnes and Noble (laughs) in America. (laughs) But, and I was looking at it and I looked through it and I was like, oh, I really want this book. (laughs) And I thought to myself, I don't use cookbooks. <laughs> no, nor do you cook, madam. <laughs> right? but, but I just wanted it like for um, a coffee table book because it's so beautiful and it really reminds me of India because yeah. we both spent quite a number of years in India and so yeah. many of the recipes are the same as it's traditional so Indian yeah. recipes as well yeah. as, mm-hmm. you know, him or um, Nepal. And, <laughs> and, try and say it. Yeah, now. Nepal and <laughs> India share the Himalayas. Maybe. Yeah. I, yeah. You know. yeah. <laughs> anyway, there's a lot of cultural exchange and similarities. And, and, yeah. and wow. also, given, it was amazing. given that we are guilty of cultural appropriation, 
Mm. You know, we were going to want to have books on on Nepalese cooking in the house. I just wanted it because it, it made me feel so good and warm inside, even without cooking any of the recipes. It could be like your start of cooking journey. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> I wonder if you could you could tell us more about your grandfather. It's very interesting. I think you said he was in Kalaya, uh-huh. Bara. Mm-hmm. And I remember when I very when I was very young, like four or five, after my dad got out, uh, he he was always cooking in the in the kitchen, mm-hmm. and so I was just very fascinated and uh, with my father whenever he was doing mm-hmm. anything. And yeah. so if he was, he, he sometimes he was painting, sometimes he's in the garage, sometimes he's cooking. I would just follow him around everywhere and just watch what he does. Yeah, and that's so, what I did. yeah. And so like he, when he was cooking, I just wanted to do that as well. I wanted to cook yeah. as, as soon as I could. I wanted to cook and try and experiment. Is that the same for you with your grandfather? He was in the, can you tell us about him? So uh, since I, I, I grew up with my grandfather, because uh, as long as I remember, my parents weren't around. My parents mm-hmm. were, I think, in Kathmandu and Hong Kong. So basically they were, they were not traveling, but they were in search of work or living their life, wow. let's say. Wow. <laughs> you know, and then, uh, um, and my grandmother was sick, so she, uh, my grandfather was always busy in the kitchen or we had a farm, so like, you know, in the farm or like he was more like a housewife of our household. <laughs> yeah. wow. and, then, <laughs> and I already had a sister who is a year and a half younger than me, so I had to take care of her. Mm. because I was the older one. So no matter if we are the same age, I'm the older one. Mm. (laughs) So um, what happened was, uh, I mean, I guess when I was young, I was already a little bit of grown-up child, or I don't know, even like as far as I remember. Maybe because I'm the elder one, I already had this responsibility that, you know, my parents aren't around, so I have to take care of my sister because my grandmother is always sick and my grandfather always had to take care of her, you know. Mm. He cannot take care of, like, how many people he's going to take care of. He's already Mm -hmm. cleaning, cooking, and this and that. So I started taking responsibilities at very young age. Mm-hmm. And then back in the days, we didn't have gas. We had a kerosene stove. Do you know kerosene yeah. stove? Kerosene. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. Uh, <clears throat> uh, he didn't want me to help, but I used to love hanging out with him. He's a very spiritual guy, mm. and everything he says is just like, you know, I like to hang out with him all the time. Like, you know, it was some, yeah. you have somebody like that. Yeah. Like, so, so some people have that aura and the yeah. uh, communication. Energy, Energy uh, exactly. Yeah. And then, um, uh, I mean, basically we, we were in school all day. And mm-hmm. in the morning and the evening, we have some time. So in the morning and evening, I would like to be with my grandfather father as much as possible and uh, 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 like uh, we used to have garden so he used to take care of the garden and then I was there with him in the garden you know, picking mm-hmm. or like washing like simple things not big things and then uh, whenever he used to cook uh, I used to like like for example it was if he had a hard time turning on the stove, I used to like, you know, I'll do it, I'll do it, don't worry about it, <laughs> don't worry about it. I was one of those kids, like, I always used to say, I'll do it, I'll do it, don't worry about it. Mm. So uh, that's how it just started. And like, you know, because kerosene uh, stove, like for old people, you have to yeah. like, uh, you cough a lot. Because it yeah. has these oh, fumes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's yes. right. And yes. so I really felt bad. And once you are old and you start coughing, you just cough for, I don't know, five, yeah. ten minutes nonstop. Yeah. So that's how I started. And then obviously uh, my parents had told me to take care of my sister. So generally, like, you know, I had to, I don't know, 
I just thought it was my responsibility to take care of my grandfather because my parents mm-hmm. aren't there. Right. So uh, that's how whenever like uh, he used to cook, I used to be around there to chop the stuff. And then once we are done eating, I used to do the dishes. So I started very early. Like I don't Mm. even, I can't even say when, but very early. And it really helped him because besides taking care of us, my grandmother was always sick. So he has to, he has Mm. to give her time as well. So that's how it started and I really liked it. Like it was kind of passing time with your grandfather, let's say. Mm. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, like when do you have extra time? Only in the kitchen, to be honest, or in the garden. Beside that, yeah. he, has, he has to take care of the grandmother. And beside yeah. that, I had to go to school or take care mm-hmm. of my sister. So, And that's how it started. But uh, I had to... Uh, quit him which was really sad because my uh, my mother was pregnant and she was expecting a baby my brother so then I had to go to Kathmandu to live with them mm-hmm. and then that's how my real cooking or my day-to-day like you know everyday cooking started before that I used to just help as a shoe chef <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, since my mother was pregnant there was nobody to cook so like it automatically uh, I it automatic- was your job yeah <laughs> job exactly and then even uh, her pregnancy was a bit uh, not normal so like mm-hmm. uh, she had to take a long bed rest so then mm-hmm. automatically I had to uh, continue it and then Mm -hmm. for some reason my mother and my family really enjoyed my cooking so it became my job then after that (laughs) yeah child labor yeah Yeah. (laughs) seriously you you said that you were traditionally trained by your mother what does that look Mm -hmm. like what does traditionally Um, trained what is that traditionally trained uh, in a sense, my grandfather cooking was very village cooking. So, like, mm-hmm. you know, there was no certain way to cook. He just put everything together, put the spices and, like, you know, if dinner is ready. And then, uh, <laughs> my, <laughs> which is still tastes good. I, I don't say, like, you know, it was bad. Yeah. But uh, when I started living with my mother, because before that, like you said, my parents weren't around, so... I never had tried the very authentic, let's say, Indian food or, you know, mm-hmm. food that is nice, uh, cooked in a certain way where you put uh, potatoes in certain time or spices on certain time right. where there's a technique. Yeah. And uh, when I started living with my mother, my mother grew up in India. Uh, so she cooks a lot of Bengali food and then she also cook a lot of South Indian and North Indian food. So that's mm. how I started having different flair, you know. It's like, wow, yeah. like, this is really good. Oh, my God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like uh, uh, the amount of spices she puts or mm. like, you know, the style she cooks, it was very different. And yeah. uh, I thought that uh, I should learn this because... I don't know, like, uh, I just, it it just came from inside, to be honest, because uh, mm-hmm. uh, I feel like if I if I learn this kind of cooking, then this is a skill, this is a skill set, yeah. I can have it for myself, because uh, in our culture, uh, a woman does not stay with their mother or parents for the rest of their life, right? Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. when I grow up, I have to do my own cooking. Mm-hmm. Anyhow, so I, when you're already used to eating such food, obviously when you go outside, where are you going to get that food? Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can get that yeah. food. Yeah. Plus, like, uh, I come from a middle-class family where you can't really go out and just think about eating outside. So yeah. you yeah. have to learn how to cook whatever you want to eat. Mm-hmm. And that's how I thought that uh, I feel like this is a great skill and... Uh, if I don't cook for myself, maybe like in the future, I can become a chef and get a job or I don't know, like mm-hmm. anything can happen. Because mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. yeah. my mother really is a good chef, to be honest. 
I tried a lot of food, but her food really stands out. And I thought, like, you know, I'm already blessed with uh, such chef, <laughs> yeah. like, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm trying to, uh, and I don't have to pay for anybody to learn. <laughs> I just yeah. have to cook for her all the time. So whatever. I'll <laughs> yeah. just do it. It's good training. She has, she has yeah. a good palate for yeah. giving you yeah. feedback. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. exactly. And uh, <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. Like in the beginning days, I used to experiment a lot. Mm. I mean, I started experimenting with food when I was like 12 or 13. Can you imagine mm. that? Yeah. yeah. And then uh, that's why like I did a lot of mistakes when I was very young Mm -hmm. and that is how over the time I learned a lot of things not only about food but food culture and techniques and uh, growing and just everything that is a part of agricultural society Mm -hmm. so so for me I love it Mm-hmm. Now, yeah. now I think uh, um, I have taken this journey because I want to help people who do not love it. Mm. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think you're well on your way because I think your book's amazing and it's easy to follow and it's beautiful recipes, nice mm-hmm. recipes, tasty recipes. And um, yeah, it's perfect. If you're not really into cooking as much as you imagine you are it's it's about an emotional state and if you and if you if something gives you a particular emotion then maybe you will you will have this raga or devesha Mm. where you will either desire it or you will reject it and so i think it's critical to i think to have if you're going to have a healthy lifestyle to to have homemade food. It's true. And if yeah. you're, you have to learn how to associate cooking with good feeling. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will come by itself once she starts giving a little bit of time. Like, you know, let's say you have to have like a practice, just like yeah. yoga is a practice, which I'm mm. not really good at, which I should <laughs> have given more time. But for me, uh, my cooking is like my yoga and my cooking is like my meditation. Cooking is not only to eat healthy, to be honest. Cooking Mm -hmm. is about, for me, it's everything. Like Mm -hmm. if you want to be happy, you need to learn how to cook. If you want to share that happiness, you need to know how to cook. Obviously, Mm -hmm. you want to be healthy, you you need to know how to cook. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I love it. Because I feel like, uh, what are we, what are we here for if we can't even eat good food? That's mm-hmm. like the most important part of living a life. And yeah. anything comes like you know, it is uh, secondary. Yeah. Like our other passions, like designing this book or yeah. photographing mm-hmm. or, or whatever passion you have, yoga, painting, yeah. music, mm. this and that, farming. Farming is also very important. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So um, I feel like I I hope more people understand that because there is this whole culture that does not want you to understand it. For mm. example, mm. packaged food industry is they don't yeah. want you to understand that, and if for a temporary time, obviously, it is good for you. That's what you think because mm-hmm. you don't have time now, mm-hmm. and then it makes you feel like you know, oh my god, thank God I'm like full because I bought <laughs> this <laughs> this food, right? Yeah. Temporarily, yeah. I get it; it's good. But like, you know, over the long run, it is not going to be good, Mm. not only for your health, but also your child's health since you guys are parents. Mm. Yeah. 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 And uh, if we don't realize it right now and open our eyes, then I think the next generation is going to suffer really bad. Mm. That's Mm. what I'm seeing. I mean, I've already seen this generation uh, suffering really bad and we can see there are so many diseases so many, for no yeah. reason like so many and there yeah. are newer diseases that's coming because mm-hmm. of this processed food mm-hmm. uh, so if you're yeah, already that's sick, really interesting if you're already sick 
just imagine how your like if the parents aren't healthy how the child is going to be healthy mm-hmm. this is mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah so yeah so yeah i yeah. have i have a question for you cuz it, it's your life history is very interesting i mean thinking about you growing up in nepal and and there is a civil war and your parents are go are traveling and going all over to kathmandu or hong kong to find work mm-hmm. and then something very interesting happens with you where you're in kathmandu with your mother learning a very traditional way of of cooking from your mom and she likes your cooking very much and you're now the cook <laughs> and then you become uh you start working in hong kong yeah and then you go to art school in minnesota yeah. <laughs> now this 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 there's a gap here of comprehension yeah. i don't understand how this is even plausible for a middle class girl from nepal to suddenly be in minnesota like that's for one that's very expensive it's an art school this yeah. is very expensive i went yeah. to art school in chicago yeah and I, wow. it took me ten years just to pay pay off the debt, and it's yeah. very it's very big. How did this happen to you? It's a very long story, <laughs> <laughs> but very interesting. It's very interesting. I'm glad mm. you asked because uh, nobody had really asked me this, and I think mm. uh, my husband was uh, going to ask me. a lot of my life is trick question in his podcast to be honest <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was um, after my uh, high school i was so good at taking care of children now because i took care of my sister and brother my grandfather my mother my mm, <laughs> father yeah. and cooking uh, again child labor let's say yeah. <laughs> child labor yeah. for me it was completely child labor but at the mm. time uh, nepal was having civil war and then i didn't know what to do and my parents they wanted to send me college they say mm-hmm. you know yeah so i was really you know stayed that i was thinking like uh, i don't understand my parents like instead of sending me and thinking about my future which i was already a smart child to be honest you yeah. know for that yeah. is uh, they thought that uh, now you should go to hong kong and work there you know mm. and then of uh, for a while i thought uh, whatever like you know cuz i am very like i'm very at that time i was very like uh, i don't know how to put this in word but like go with the thinking, flow go with the flow or i was <laughs> yeah that's what i'm thinking <laughs> i was like uh, not only go with the flow i was like uh, if they are not thinking about my future maybe i'll just make my future however uh, right it takes me like whatever like mm-hmm. right right i'll just <laughs> go on this path and see where it goes well, and make yeah. my own way yeah exactly You're nihilistic yeah. <laughs> yeah, i wouldn't say that but i was a bit pissed or like you know yeah. so like, oh, wow i was supposed to go to I mean, this is my time to college yeah. or learn some skill because I was already into art. I come from an ethnicity where they're already great artists by yeah. nature, let's say, because of like you know, generation of art. Mm-hmm. And uh, I was, I wanted to study art, but in Nepal, uh, if you can only be an artist if you are from a rich family. That's absolutely. I, you know, <laughs> I can't but, tell people enough at home. That's absolutely yeah, true. true. <laughs> and then which is the reason I could not even think about studying art and right. uh, if you say if you come from a middle class and if you say I like art then it will be like what? Like what? Are you crazy? Who would be school to study art? That's a waste of money, you know. Yeah. And uh, yeah. I was really confused so I thought maybe like if I go there I, I might figure out something I don't know like whatever I'll figure it out I mean 
I have a lot of skills. <laughs> yeah. Sure. <laughs> yeah, okay. I already... You can cook, you can babysit. There are things babysit to do. And, and, and there's other other things also. <laughs> like I am naturally creative, let's say. Like I can figure mm-hmm. things out. So, uh, but uh, I also went for domestic helper. I don't know if mm-hmm. you read my story. Yeah. And then, uh, which was in also Kong, for my... you were domestic. In Hong Kong. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, it was again pre-planned by my parents. <laughs> uh, I, I had to work for my uncle, and mm. uh, since I had not spent time with my that part of uh, grandfather and grandmother, my mother's mm-hmm. side, grandfather and mother, I thought, you know what, I'm just gonna go and maybe spend time with them, you know. I like spending mm. time yeah. with old people, I think. I don't know. I just thought <laughs> yeah. time will go fast and maybe this war will be over and by that time I'll figure out something. I don't know. Like there was nothing going on in Nepal at that time, you see. Right. Because, mm-hmm. you know, you cannot go anywhere. You just have yeah. to stay home all the time. Yeah. <clears throat> it was like a lockdown kind of. Lockdown kind of, Yeah. Yeah. So I went there, but uh, I discovered that um, this was more than child labor. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, Hong Kong, yeah. Child more slavery. than child, child <laughs> yeah. slavery in Hong Kong. Yeah, I wow. That this is like a child slavery. If mm. I work here, I will never get out because uh, yeah. I never get paid. I never get off. Like, what the heck is this? This is right. uh, child <clears throat> slavery. I could not even speak about it, but after two years, I really got upset. Like, you know, this is ridiculous. Like, what kind of mess I got myself in? And then uh, I decided to work for somebody else. And at that time, that is when I decided I want to go to U.S., you know. Right. Because uh, U.S. was the only country where they had really great marketing about you can have a college degree and then you can also pay your student uh, loans or, you know, mm-hmm. college fee by uh, working certain mm-hmm. hours. So, like, yeah, yeah. for example, for me, it was a good, uh, good fit because uh, mm-hmm. obviously I wasn't going to get any money from my parents. So I had to make my own money to pay my school, right? Yeah. So um, I thought, oh, okay, I'll try that one out as well, uh, if it is in my fit, because it was also very difficult to go to U.S. Yeah. So um, yeah. very difficult, not like uh, uh, American and European kids where you just decide that, oh, I want to go to Nepal, and then you just hop on a plane and go there and you get your visa. It's not like that at all. Right. No. I mean, I've been trying my visa for two years to go back to U.S. and I have still not got it yet. So just wow. imagine. So uh, what happened was um, uh, I I had not uh, thought about what I want to study by that time, mm-hmm. but uh, <clears throat> I just knew that I'm going to U.S. I don't know anything now. <laughs> yeah. right. I think that that is the only uh, option I have. Because I don't mm-hmm. think I have any option. <clears throat> because yeah. in Nepal, you don't get loans and your parents are not going right. to pay. So I have to I have to study. Otherwise, I'm going to end up becoming a domestic helper for the rest of my life. Like someone wow. yeah, yeah. servant for the rest of mm-hmm. my life. And yeah. there are a few, um, my mother's generation, there are a few women already like that in my yeah, family. Sure. Who just thinks that, you know, it's best for them. I mean, yeah. maybe it's best for you guys. I get it. That's fine. Like, you know, you guys are doing great, but it's not for me. <laughs> yeah, mm-hmm. you wanted something different. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, again, like, people think the way they grew up, and I don't want to also um, blame them, mm-hmm. you know, because uh, the way I think, they don't think like this. Yeah. The way mm-hmm. they think, I don't think like that. So yeah. there was this huge gap of dimension there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. So, so um, and then I decided I need to at least make some money, and then um, because applying for US was expensive. 
So yeah. I worked one year for somebody else. She was really nice, paid me whatever whatever I deserved, whatever it was, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, at least you was, were getting paid this time. I was at least I was getting paid. <laughs> <laughs> she was so nice that she was giving me so many off because she was so happy with my work. And oh, to, and it's really hard to find somebody who actually enjoys cleaning and cooking and mm-hmm. taking care of child these days or even at that yeah. time. And for me, it was just like I love it, like you know. Mm. And I already had experience with my own uh, sister, brother, and then cousins. Yeah. So it was very easy for me. It wasn't mm-hmm. difficult. Yeah. And then after a year, I decided, no, now I have to go. Uh, this is not going to happen. Like, you know, <clears throat> it's been three years now. I'm already like, tra- I'm already forgetting what I studied. Like, uh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like can i even go back to college now i don't even know and then yeah. uh in us you have to everything is in uh english where sure, back yeah. home it is in english but it's still there's a huge gap yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, by that time maybe i started using computer a little bit and we never had to use email so like this whole thing was was a wow. mess yeah. yeah and i and then I went back Nepal and I, I was very determined because if I'm not going to apply and if I'm not going to get visa, I don't know what to do in my life. Right. Like at that time, I just could not think about anything because in Nepal, even now, there's no opportunity to be honest. No. You know? Yeah. Plus, like, like you said, I feel like uh, when I came back to Nepal, I'm in 1800 right now. It's like, you know, the way I think yes. and the Nepalese is completely in we are different dimensions. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I don't really blame anybody. It's just like I feel like the way people think, they live in that dimension. And oh, 1800 to... AD. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I agree. 500 years behind. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I understand so, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, and then uh, I applied and uh, luckily, to be honest, it was really at that time, I remember if like 100 people apply, then maybe one person will get visa. Sure. That was that difficult. But uh, I tried my best, let's say, whatever I had to do, I did it. Mm-hmm. And then I got it. So I now I got the visa. What am I going to study? That was the sure. like, question. Yeah. And then uh, I started thinking about business and like uh, since I was already helping my parents with business and all, mm-hmm. I it didn't really interest me. Yeah. And then since I didn't have the science background, I uh, I could not really, I think, study science at that time. Mm-hmm. And also I had to maintain GPA and this and that. And I was thinking, what I really want to do in my life? Like seriously, you know? Yeah. If I... If I'm paying from my own pocket and if I want to really work hard to get this degree, which I'm yeah. like, you know, really want, I need to really sit down and think what I really want to study and then just do it. it I don't have to worry about getting anything back. I just need a skill, skill mm-hmm. set to mm-hmm. continue the rest of my life. And then the only thing I can really think of is uh, filmmaking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. it's really into filmmaking because the way I look at uh, society by this time and just like people, you know, and yeah. Nepali filmmaking is still so behind. And I feel mm. like I feel like I am already like a uh, like a director, and I was into cinematography. I like to tell people like you know let's do this and that because I'm a sister, <laughs> older sister. Yeah, <laughs> so I decided. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think it was like it naturally came like you know I think I'm good at filmmaking like uh, I don't know about Hollywood movies but I can make uh, decent Nepali movies mm-hmm. and I was more into like artistic movie to be honest and mm-hmm. by this time we had no artistic Nepali movie let's say right. mm-hmm. the kind of movie I used to like to watch and versus the Nepali movies were so I thought, uh, that's fine. I'll just uh, do film studies and then we'll figure it out. I yeah. don't know how it's going to go. But 
uh, after a year of film studies, I started figuring out that uh, <clears throat> Minnesota is too cold. I can't really go out and be creative. I always have to yeah, be inside. Exactly. And then because of this uh, language barrier, I started getting really confused. Like, you know, I wanted to make a Nepali movie. And now I don't know how to really like... Uh, let's say English movie or I don't know, like it was really difficult because yeah. again, to make a movie, you need to have certain friends who can help you without getting yeah. any paid, you know, you need yeah. support. That's, you know? that's what I was thinking, like going into film studies, that's a, a very uh, collaborative and yeah, expensive, exactly. Uh, exactly. expensive study. Yeah. It's very expensive. And uh, since I had to do lighting, editing, like everything, no, mm-hmm. uh, I, I I didn't really start liking. Like you said, I only wanted to do directing and cinematography, not right. editing and like you know music. All of the other stuff. All of the other, and I just yeah. thought, oh my god, it's not gonna work out. I'm just gonna fail, and and this is not what I came to US for because uh, mm. as an international student you can't fail and you have to maintain a GPA otherwise uh, you are dropped out and once mm-hmm. you drop yeah. out you can't have a status so I have to I think was about so, it I was mm-hmm. so poor in art school I could barely feed mm-hmm. myself I was losing weight because I couldn't afford to eat <laughs> Luckily, I knew this Marathi family in uh, where mm-hmm. I was from, and, and she taught me how to make chats. And so mm. I'm making chats out of uh, cornflakes and peanuts, and that's I, oh. it's what I'm that's what I'm eating, you know. <laughs> oh and, my god! Uh, that's all the food I have. And uh, but I I mean, there's no way I can. I w- I wanted to study filmmaking, but there's no way. Yeah. It's so expensive. Yeah, it was so. Expensive oh. and like you said, it's collaborative. So like yeah. you, know, you have to be rich and you have to have friends who will just like you know do it waste for time. Free. Do it waste for time. time. But it's then like they have time. money as yeah. well. Then yeah, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like you have to have rich friends. Exactly. Rich oh my friends. gosh, I had I'm no glad rich that friends. You understand exactly. <laughs> <laughs> this is like a whole completely new world, and yeah. I feel like who am I gonna ask? And to be honest, there were some skills I learned during that time which helped me in the future. Like with my, yeah, yeah. just like for example, finding my graphic design. Because mm-hmm. before that, I had no idea about graphic design. Right. In Nepal, we don't have a lot of majors. We have like very limited majors, like for mm-hmm. example, business, uh, even within science, let's say management and uh, doctor, nurse. Just we say a handful of majors, yeah. not mm-hmm. like in the US, there are 200, 300 majors. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So after a year, I decided uh, I cannot do this. Like, you know, this is like just making me depressed, uh, to be sure. honest. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the lesson I learned was uh, you might like something, but it might not, you will eventually realize that it might not be for you. You know, mm-hmm. once you start yeah. doing it, and then I decided I think it's not for me, but I still want to. I like art now. I have found out that I think I like art, and I'm already spending money. I think I'm gonna study something related to art. Mm-hmm. And that's how I was digging different majors, and I discovered graphic design, and I was like, "Wow, what is graphic this like design. graphic design?" Oh, yeah. like you can design books and you can design t-shirt and uh, hat and then also also do video and photography and like you know so many things yeah, yeah. i feel like uh you know what i don't have to become uh, or go to school as a filmmaker to make film because mm-hmm. all you need is a concept and a camera right to make a documentary let's say i was more into yeah realistic movie or documentary movie not mm-hmm. hollywood mm-hmm. movie <laughs> yeah, yeah so uh i thought wow this is gonna be great fit because uh, somewhere in my life uh i had a dream that writing book is gonna be wow like you have to be not only rich but uh, 
very lucky yeah. to find find something that uh, you stay home and then uh, write about it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you see what I mean? It's like yeah. more than being rich. And yeah. then I thought, oh, I, uh, oh like, uh, this is great, I think. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to continue this major, but I want to pick this major and see how this mm-hmm. is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but to be honest, like, uh, even the art school, it really depends what kind of art school you go to, mm-hmm. yeah. right? Like, you know, there are great ones and then there are just like uh, good ones and average mm-hmm. ones. Mm-hmm. So let's say my uh, art school was good experience, but uh, what I really started now learning that uh, uh, the teachers are not really teaching you how to design books, but they are really teaching you like you know, package design or uh, let's say mostly like I think we're focusing package design. Like for example, you end up going to work in a corporate world. Mm. Sure, yeah, yeah. You yeah. know what yeah. I'm saying? So I was They're... making a lot of brochures and flyers. Yeah, and yeah. Like yeah. And then uh, if I would not have already worked as a domestic helper, I might have become thought that, you know, wow, this is great. I will work for Facebook or sure. Apple or I don't know. Yeah, the pie in the <laughs> sky. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> but uh, I started seeing that uh, I don't really like going out and work. Like I like staying home and work. That is why I chose graphic design. So I mm-hmm. can travel the world and still have a job and like, you know, make some way mm-hmm. to have some way to make money. That mm-hmm. was the thing. And then uh, by the time I, uh, I graduated, I completely saw the full picture that uh, <clears throat> like even with my uh, seniors, let's say, Nobody's really doing their own thing, but they're all trying to do a job. Yeah, yeah. And after working so much, I realized that I don't really like doing a job. Like, I don't like doing a job. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm a creator. I feel and, you, sister. <laughs> yeah, definitely. You're a painter. Like, you know, like I can work for other people, but I can only work with one or two person. Like, if there is too many ideas in the plate, I just feel like, you know, it's not my cup of tea and that's fine. Yeah. And yeah. there is yeah. a lot of people who don't understand. And there are a lot of people I met in my life. They didn't understand me at all. Yeah. And then I found my husband. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Then I found and my husband. And he understood you. In the U.S.? Is he American? He, uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm. I, I met him in Lexington, Kentucky while I was, you know, really confused. It's like, you know, I don't understand these people. I have already been <laughs> slave in my life. I don't want to be slave. I would rather, like, you know, cook for one person and become an entrepreneur and then focus yeah. in design or whatever but i don't want to do this nine to five job i just can't do it you met him in kentucky yeah yeah so after but that's I graduated, why you were so confused you were in kentucky tell us how did you make make this decision to go to kentucky it's amazing was there a job yeah. opportunity mm-hmm. No, so after I graduated, uh, like I said, I already saw the future where uh, yeah. the colleagues are sending us, let's say, yeah. like, you know. Yeah. And then what happened was a great thing happened in my, in my let's say, life cycle. Already mm-hmm. too many great things happened, but this one was very remarkable because uh, I, was, I was just a graduate, like I was graduating in 2015, and then... As an international student, there is another drama. <laughs> you have to find a job right away right. within three yeah. months. Otherwise, uh, you don't out. have status out. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. who is thinking all this thing, to be honest? Like, I wasn't really thinking. Yeah. And I discovered that it is also really hard to find a job right after you graduate. Right. And by the time I was graduate, I was a graduate, I actually already decided that 
I don't think I want to become a graphic designer. Oh my God, like uh, mm-hmm. this is not something me, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I thought graphic design was great, which I still think it's great, but I could not find what I really like within graphic design, let's say, mm-hmm. at that yeah. time. So I got really depressed, <laughs> like yeah. really yeah. It's like I'm 30 years old and I thought I was smart enough to figure out things and I still not figure it out. I feel really yeah. old now. <laughs> you know, I, I, if, I could, if I could interject, I've, I've, I so much sympathize with you and, and I felt all these same things. And when I'm graduating, very similar feeling because mm-hmm. you think that you're smart enough to figure it out, but really you are being exploited by university and by the whole system. And and so like you go into it wanting to be creative and free, they give you a hundred thousand dollars in debt. And now you're going to be a wage slave 30 years to pay off the debt. And so I was faced with that same. Now I have to go and teach in high school. I don't want to teach in high school. That's not, I, I, when I left high school, I wanted to leave high school. I understand. <laughs> and so now this, and so like I went to India for 10 years. Fuck this. Oh, yeah. I, I don't want to stay, be a slave. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, uh, I would like to mention this food during my college, okay? And then I will tell you my story yeah. of yeah. like season. Because he yep, mentioned please. about his food. He was so poor that uh, he could not afford uh, yeah. food, right? So yeah. exactly. Can you imagine me? I mean, he was an American. He can get loans and also help from his parents and, you know, things like that. Mm-hmm. For me, it was so difficult because every dollar is 100 times, almost 100 times more than, yeah. you know, in, yeah. <laughs> in Nepal. <laughs> so, in Nepal. So... So, like, uh, every time going out was just, like, you know, $7, $8. Oh, my God. Like, how, how am I going to – how can I manage that, right? Yeah. So, what uh, – again, my cooking skill really helped me. Do you understand? Yeah. This is why, mm-hmm. I, to be honest, I really learned the cooking uh, during my young age because I guess I was a middle class and I knew that, you know, over the time of my life, I don't know if I'm ever going to be a rich person. So mm-hmm. I cannot afford all the food I want to eat. And I'm a big foodie. I have to eat good food. No matter yeah. how poor I am, I have to yeah. eat really like royal food. Yeah. <laughs> I understand like, you. Yeah. You know? so, uh, mm. so when I was in college, uh, most of my friends, they survived in cereal. Like sure. Cereal, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. Cereal. Same. And I was really surprised that, like, you know, cereal is not a thing to eat for me. <laughs> what, what, what? You guys are eating cereal like you're five years old. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was five years old. And mm. then uh, they were surprised that, you know, uh, like, I am older than them, mm-hmm. but I look younger than them. Like, yeah. mm-hmm. they told me, you were 13 years old when I was in college. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. no, I'm not. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> I'm not 13. Because <laughs> I like I'm 15. I mean, it's been over 10 years I graduated, yeah. so like you can imagine. And uh, and because like my uh, friends, let's say American friends, they grew up eating a lot of processed food and not yeah. really mm-hmm. organic food, and so like they look uh, mature very fast. Yeah, you but know? it's also the white skin cracks very quickly. And, mm, it's a problem. It does, it mm. does but I feel like uh, it's really because of the food, food, yeah. whatever they eat since they are very young and a lot of bread, you know. Yeah. And we don't really yeah. do a lot of bread. We do uh, roti or like rice. Yeah. So uh, I end up also teaching and cooking for a lot of, a lot of friends from all over the world while I was in college. Ah, mm. yeah. And believe it or not, um, I do have a vibration or like whatever you said, a vibe, that if you hang out with me, you will end up learning how to cook. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, uh, 
that is just like a basic formula because <laughs> I cook and then I also order around like, you know, my friends, can you do this and can you do that? Yeah. And then just yeah. like... Uh, <laughs> You make learn them to little sous chefs. They just learn to cook, yeah. They just learn to cook and they also enjoy to cook because I have mm. seen a lot of my friends, including my husband, who never used to cook and now we have a fight. Who is going to cook? Mm. Yeah. Can you imagine? It's like, you know. I cannot and, imagine. Uh, <laughs> 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 He's a musician, touring musician, so he never used to cook. And now uh, there are days that I have to cook my own food because I'm craving my food. Yeah. Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? Sure, and yeah. then he's like in the mood to cook. It's like, no, I'm going to cook today. <laughs> there is a particular dish in my head and I want to eat right that dish the way I want because mm. I don't know you're going to make it the exactly. exact way. <laughs> so we end up arguing for things uh-huh. like that, which is like very uncommon. <laughs> it's very nice. It's nice. So, um, so uh, since I went through also that phase, you know, I went through a lot of phase in my life. Yeah. Mm. Which is the other reason I also put this book out with very simple formula, because I was also thinking about all these uh, college kids, because they're all broke to be honest, yeah. and uh, and uh, they're also lazy. They don't want to cook, you know, <laughs> because. Uh, <laughs> they want to spend more time outside, um, like, you know, college or event or yeah. parties they, and this and that. Or on their devices. <laughs> now. Or on devices. <laughs> Just in general, like, uh, if it is a lot, then they will be like, oh, like, you know, this is all the pizza. Yeah, yeah. 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 Right? Easy. But if uh, uh, it takes... 30 to 45 minutes to order pizza, right? So if pizza won't come right away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That's so enough time 30... to cook. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why most of my recipes are 30 mm-hmm. to 45 minutes. And, uh, and that's why I didn't also want it to make intricate recipes because all my life I ate sem- simple food, let's say. Mm. Because I was yeah. never like a rich kid. I didn't yeah, have a yeah. lot of money to spend 500 one hundred dollar no. for one ingredient. Yeah. Let's say. No. <laughs> yeah. So I was really like not only thinking about people who want to cook, but also like most people are broke and look, yeah. look at after this corona, like you know, yeah. Most people are always middle class. To be honest, they can sure. afford big car and big this and big that, big house. But yeah. when it comes to cooking and eating, I feel like you eat. At least two times a day. Mm-hmm. You know, and multiply that with, I mean, your if you have one kid, two kid, three kid, it's yeah. one of the most expensive thing. Yeah. You know, where you spend a lot of money. Mm-hmm. So uh, I was thinking, like, what's the point of making really intricate food, which I can make, but I don't do that every day. Yeah. You know? Uh, you need to eat simple food every day because it takes one hour to cook simple meal if you have a uh, yeah. family of four, let's say, for example. You know, that's what I was thinking. Husband, wife and two children mm-hmm. or you know, yeah. gran- uh, grand- grandparents or, you know, your side father or mother or if you are trying to invite your friends. That's why I was thinking two to four people I need to think about two to four people yeah, because yeah, yeah. it's always two or four people. It's true. And then when it, <laughs> when it is two to four two to four people, the ingredient list is already long. You know, yeah. yeah. want this, you want that, we want that, and there's no point uh, eating expensive food every day. It, the point to be healthy is to eat really like homemade, simple. But nutritious. Nutritious yes. is very important, right? Yes, yes. So that is how, back to your college thing, <laughs> I was thinking about somebody like you. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Where like, you know, I really wanted to help my friends, but I'm not, I can't sit there and teach them all the time. And yeah. a lot of my friends uh, now are supporting me because they, they have eaten my food. And mm-hmm. they already know how delicious it is. 
and now just imagine that you know their friend has written a book and now they can cook and then also teach their kids yeah. very simple recipes like <laughs> yeah yeah so that is how uh, i was thinking like like i said i wasn't thinking about just writing a book but uh, there was a lot of research in my head yeah. over the time where like you know mm-hmm. it was building up building up and i also didn't know beautiful cookbook exist until i was 30 years old mm huh. that's that. amazing yeah. so now let's go back to our lexington story so, <laughs> <laughs> so what happened was i was uh, really depressed and my sister lived there okay. in lexington oh. yeah. yeah my sister and brother in law they lived there Oh, he, his brother-in-law is from Kentucky. No, he's from Nepal, but my sister had a green card, so okay. like uh, she went to America and then for some reason they ended up in Lexington, Kentucky. Oh, this is also <laughs> bizarre. Okay. Yeah. No, it's like <laughs> I've also lived in Kentucky, so I'm just very interested. Yeah. We keep yes, meeting yes, in the yes. same place. Oh. Yeah. Can I yeah. like Kentucky to be honest because mm. uh, it really reminded me of mountain lifestyle. Yeah, for and sure. Yeah. People from Kentucky and people from Nepal are very similar. I was really like surprised where mm-hmm. we are like yeah. the ancient and they are our future. Yeah. yeah. As That's a living, cool. you know what I mean? Uh, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so what happened was I was really depressed and I didn't want it to work and what happened? is a uh, earthquake happened remember in 2015 there was a really big or devastating oh, in Nepal. earthquake in yeah. Nepal yeah not and, not uh, Kentucky yeah. no, no yeah. in Nepal in Nepal <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> my <laughs> life was also having a earthquake but yeah. on top of that yeah there was a big mm-hmm. earthquake in Nepal yeah. and uh, and uh, at that time i was thinking i want to return back and do some temple studies because by this time i already knew that i'm a very spiritual child and mm-hmm. then i never really got to study temples and temple art i'm like mm-hmm. really uh, it was just a passion they say there was yeah. no yeah. study investment. but i yeah. my own investment let's, let's say yeah. and i already knew like nobody's doing this and these temples are our like ancestors it's like mm-hmm. the great mm-hmm. artwork of nepal and they are already so old and i'm a graduate of art student now so like you know there is yeah. a lot to do in life mm-hmm. and not only just work and uh, do a job so yeah. I, mean, <laughs> I, i yeah. wanted to become a more like a researcher but then earthquake happened and then i had a lot of debt so i could not go back <laughs> because uh yeah. Art I school. cannot <laughs> stay in Nepal and then pay my debt right yeah. no no so, impossible no. impossible I thought I so, could stay in India and not pay my debt but also impossible <laughs> no, correct impossible. no honestly <laughs> yeah. like you never want to go to US I think yeah, uh, I, then you can do that but I don't want to do that so. it's like yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't yeah. want to do that because uh, again I'm a very spiritual person and like what kind of a spiritual person would do some shady things like that you know? yeah <laughs> <laughs> wow so that, I was that but... shady person but okay <laughs> well no, I mean like I I get it when you are in so much debt you have so much you have so much thoughts that come yeah. in your head I get there it. are just things you can't I, do I, yeah exactly but mm. uh, deep inside you know that there are things that you should do and mm-hmm. there are things that you know you do not want to do yeah yeah because there is no point right. <clears throat> and thank god I didn't have a lot of debt because i was continuously also working and paying off the debt Amazing. but i still had some debt you know mm-hmm. and then oh, what happened was we were uh, given a visa because of the earthquake because right. the kids cannot go back we were given a visa where i don't have to find a job right away that okay. was like oh my god blessing from krishna is like thank <laughs> thank Whoa. you krishna Whoa. seriously 
I didn't have to find a job right away and I also didn't have to do uh, graphic design work. I can do whatever or I don't have, right. if I don't want, I can just not do anything, mm-hmm. right? So it was mm-hmm. a temporary protective status. Yeah. So I thought, you know what, this is like, <laughs> this is like life-changing uh, status for me and uh, I never thought something this is going to happen. But I'm going to take a chance and then I'm going to go to my sister and then relax a little bit because my head is not working at all. Yeah, yeah. And I need to first take care of myself mm-hmm. to figure out what I really want to do. And then that's how I ended up in Lexington, Kentucky. <laughs> <laughs> very nice. And yeah, you meet a very had- nice boy. Yeah, it's like uh, we were, I think, meant to meet. That's why I had to crawl through too many <laughs> hurdles mm-hmm. <laughs> to reach to Kentucky. Yeah. Um, so <clears throat> after I went to Kentucky, um, <clears throat> I met him after, let's say, several months. Uh, I usually don't go out, so like, you know, it was... <laughs> Just like, <laughs> Same. yeah, like, uh, so it was weird. And then, um, and even like meeting him was not a coincidence, to be honest. Mm-hmm. But anyways, that's uh, again another long story. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, when I met him, I uh, instantly knew that like, you know, uh, we have a very uh, great connection. Mm -hmm. Uh, which is not like, you know, just a connection. But it was very weird that uh, I I had this connection with somebody that, you know, I don't even know. It's weird, like, you know. Mm -hmm. (laughs) This person didn't even go to college with me. Like, you know, it's just like, it was so weird. Mm -hmm. But it is what it is. And then uh, as we started, like, you know, uh, first we started working in some uh, art projects because he's a musician so right. he also do photography and videography so um <clears throat> but uh, as we and we we both knew that there is a really like unique connection mm-hmm. and uh, he's also into very he's spiritual as well but let's say not as much as me at that time mm-hmm. but i can tell like you know uh, just like a uh, American guy from Kentucky and a spiritu- in a spirituality, you know what I mean? It's like mm. yeah. makes it's, it's <laughs> makes no sense, but um, uh, it happened. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, and then we went to Barnes and Noble. There was a bookstore which was very close to our. <laughs> <laughs> community but again i come from a background where uh, we don't really buy books and right. like we don't, like you said like even though i was into cooking and all uh, i was more thinking about opening uh, either a restaurant or uh, uh, what do you call food cart yeah yeah, yeah, yeah food like truck food yeah. Yeah. i'll do food truck because mm-hmm. history is also too expensive i don't want to be in debt mm-hmm. yeah then uh, but my husband he's like a serial reader <laughs> yeah. oh, okay. so he loves reading right he's very his mind is like i can't really understand it's like he's in, uh, he's uh, if you think i'm in this dimension and nepal is in 1800 i feel like he's more into the future he's just like he's somewhere out there <laughs> so uh he loves reading and he took me to Barnes and noble because i think by this time he already knew that i should already know how to write books but right. how come I don't know, you know? Mm. Right. Because <laughs> we were talking about that. I want. I went to college for graphic design, but I don't like graphic design. Mm. I don't know, like, but I do like design. <laughs> <laughs> but I also cannot uh, live without doing photography. And uh, But cooking is also a very important part of my life. So... Um, Clearly, I the, don't know, the like, cookbook. He was is, connecting all the dots. He connected all <laughs> yeah. the dots, so he has exactly. to show you all the beautiful cookbooks. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, uh, and then he said, like, okay, let's go over there. And uh, we went. And then he told me, okay, go to this cookbook section, you know. Because when <laughs> yeah. he told me about cookbook, I was like, oh, uh, like, 
I I know cookbooks, but uh, I was trying to think that if I ever went to a bookstore and look at a cookbook, do you understand what I mean? Like I feel like this was the moment I was like, seems like I have never seen a cookbook in my life. <laughs> 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 what, what did this guy just say to me? I I'm I feel speechless. Let's say like yeah. I feel so dumb. Because oh. I was really thinking that uh, I was so much into cooking and growing. I should already know this thing. <laughs> But I was really thinking like, oh, like, like I couldn't say anything. Because yeah. for me, it was like, I know. But at the same time, I don't know anything about this world. Yeah. 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 You so never needed it, the book to do the cooking. So exactly. <laughs> why have a cookbook? <laughs> But madam. Exactly. It is such a giant step. To, I've I've been in hundreds of museums, and I yeah. still don't have my paintings in a museum. <laughs> But, you know, so It's to go hard. into Barnes and Noble and see a yeah. book, a uh, cookbook that you've never seen before, yeah. and then within the space of a couple days to have your a book in yeah. the bookstore. <laughs> This is impossible. How do you? How is this achieved? Harmony saw it in her <laughs> bookstore in Canada. It's impossible. My Canadian Barnes and Noble. <laughs> this is incredible. Yeah. It was on display. Was how? Incredible. How can? Is it this woman Heather Hosevik? Did she do this? No. How are you doing this? How? Your agent is getting I, you a book. <laughs> no, I think like uh, <clears throat> I it was this meant to be. Yeah, it was just. I, I, for me, for me, I feel like it was meant to be. That's why I decided to like you know. <clears throat> I don't know. I mean, if it wasn't meant to be, I don't think I would have went through this path. Yeah, mm -hmm. because I will tell you one thing. Because you guys are painter, and then in yoga, mm -hmm. so all this life. Most people who are spiritual, they want to do do good karma, right? Mm -hmm. So if you do good karma, you, no matter how bad your situation is, there is a light inside which mm -hmm. will give or tell you that uh, you will end up getting something back out of this good karma eventually, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Right. <clears throat> Next life. So, yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Well, <laughs> well, no, I mean, it, it can be next life can be this life because yeah. when I discovered cookbook, for me, it was completely next life because yeah. I had never even opened or seen the door of this life. Mm. Yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? And when I went to this bookstore and when I started looking at the books, I was really like, you know, I wrote 10 books right there. Like yeah. sitting there, I was like, like in my head, I just like, Psh, Yeah. yeah, amazing. <laughs> I I was really surprised myself, like you know how this is happening, but I was almost like traveling through the time and just like you know mm -hmm. going back and forth. Yeah, I don't know. Things were happening yeah, really in fast, and I just could not control it, and I can mm -hmm. see it all through my eyes, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and <Yeah>. then. <laughs> I know if most people can understand this because, again, like you said, I had a lot of experience for all these things. Then I discovered this thing. Not yeah. like I discovered and went through the journey. Yeah. So uh, I was like, you know what? Uh, and by this time, I was thinking, so anybody has wrote a, a cookbook from Nepal? Because I don't really think so. Mm -hmm. Nepal, we don't really have cookbooks because everybody, <laughs> like, you know, the People background. People know how to cook or they, <laughs> yeah. or they and, hire uh, someone. <laughs> yeah. And uh, they also like to keep their secrets. You know, yeah. uh, family secret, yeah. like their secret. Yeah. So, yeah. writing a book was just like as a, a great chef for a lot of people. It will never even cross their mind. I came back to Nepal and I have met few amazing mm -hmm. chefs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> When I tell them about cookbooks, they don't even think about it. They want to, <laughs> you know, they want to start a great restaurant, restaurant, and, yeah. and become a teacher. But book is something they still. Don't understand, which I get right. because I didn't understand myself. You know, mm -hmm. yeah. I actually saw that, and I already had the skills how to write it. 
Mm-hmm. So yeah. um, that happened and my husband came and then he asked me, so what do you think about it? And I was like, oh my God, like I was supposed to know all this thing in college. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to write a tiny book in college already, you know, yeah. as a mock-up or whatever, like, you know, they already have a big publisher or like, you know, how in college they have their own publishing house right. and they sure, yeah, yeah. Print out a lot of things that makes no yeah. sense and, and <laughs> we never end up. And then in college, uh, I had no money to even print my own posters. No, and, of course you not. Know, yeah. yeah, because of like so many brochures and so many this and that, it's like yeah. I'm broke. I'm not even gonna print yeah. this thing. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't even study painting in art school because paint was yeah. too expensive. Too expensive. Yeah. I would like to tell you, I also yeah. always wanted to paint, but paint was so expensive, I could not even thought about it. Yeah, you know? yeah. it's like you know what? I'm not gonna take that class because I already spent. Here and there, like every semester, you have to pay this and that. Yeah. that. I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I'm already paying the tuition. Yeah. You just need to provide me all my materials. Right. Yeah. My, my like, mother, well, I told my mother that I couldn't afford materials for painting. It's like, they didn't provide you materials? Like, exactly. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> they made me like so dumb. It's like, I don't even want to say anything. And then, oh. you know, the weird thing was, my friend who were in science, science department, yeah. they used to have so much funding that they didn't have to buy anything. Like oh, They don't buy Bunsen cold. burners and tubes. <laughs> no. It's all there. Exactly. And they oh. would break a lot of stuff and it's still sure. like spread by no the cares. state. Uh, and they used to make fun of me. It's like, <laughs> they, didn't even provide this. they didn't even provide a printing. And I was like, no, exactly. Like, I don't even know how to go, uh, go and complain because this is so weird. Like, <laughs> it is terrible. Yeah. And then I did <clears throat> I did complain to one of my uh, advisor. Like, can you imagine because the, the advisor understand that I'm from Nepal and like, you know, yeah. I don't have a scholarship and grants. Like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. I'm paying and paying and I'm working really hard for all this thing. And yeah. then all the tests to failed uh, prints what about that like at oh. least i should be able to get some <laughs> test uh, prints so i can yeah. actually print the right print you know right yeah, yeah. Print. and your advisor's looking at you like you're insane <laughs> like are you crazy and this is a this is no you have to pay yeah, your no. own way <laughs> yeah so um <clears throat> uh buns and Nobu was definitely very life-changing moment in my life and um, that's when I really decided you know what I need to write book in my life I don't know anything else I already know how to write book um, but I don't know when this is gonna happen because you again to write this book you need to again spend money and then you know time and the beautiful thing about the book was most people write manuscript and then find the publisher. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I didn't do that. Yeah. I didn't do that because uh, I myself didn't know at that time that which book should I write in the beginning? Oh my yeah. God. Like, you know, I was confused because there are so many recipes. Yeah. And, but uh, I didn't want to just write a book and then put it out. I yeah. wanted mm-hmm. to write a very meaningful book. And uh, make sure that this is what I really, this is like my art. Yeah. It's not only a cookbook. This is my art. And eventually I want my art book in museums. Just like you want to painting in museums. Um, I was thinking like there are so many artwork in museum and I love going to museum, right? Mm -hmm. But I again didn't see more uh, artwork with food and agricultural world. Mm-hmm. You know? and I feel like a lot of children go to museum to open their eyes you just see a work and you can get lost and you can imagine whatever you want mm-hmm. no matter what a painter or a artist has done right mm-hmm. it, it, it helps you to open your mind and be creative mm-hmm. and I was thinking and that's when in the bookstore uh, I saw like how these are cookbooks. I get it. 
because I was looking inside and I discovered that uh, but most of these people are not really interested in food photography or food design. Ah, uh, yeah, they do have someone do that for them. Exactly. Yeah. And, and even that uh, food is my niche, but for them it was not really a niche. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, like... For example, uh, a publisher has a designer and a photographer, right. but that person does a lot of different photography and yes. that designer does a different kind of books. Mm -hmm. right? yeah. But for me, uh, what they, at that moment, I realized that uh, food is already my niche. This is like, you know, something I really wanted to do. So I can see food in very different, in a photographic angle. You know? yeah and then also as a designer perspective and i started thinking like this world is already calling me and i just didn't know it mm. Mm. you know like you said how this happened it just happened like right it was already calling me yeah. Yeah. but uh, for some reason i could not see it you mm. know because there was a lot of distraction and it really also matters who you hang out with because yeah. if I wasn't hanging out with my husband, I don't think I would have discovered the world of cookbooks. Yeah. Yeah. I would have rather become, uh, I would rather started a food truck. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. You know? yeah. And become a designer for my own company. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So <clears throat> that was a very life changing moment in my life because uh, it really made me think like there are so many possibilities in this world. And uh, I haven't really discovered all of them, to be mm -hmm. honest. Yeah. You know? And this is just one of it. Well, I wonder if you could tell us about Red Lightning Books. And uh -huh. you, that's your publisher. Mm -hmm. And you said that you started with the publisher before the manuscript. It, sounded, it sounds like, or if I can ask yeah, the question, uh, that they gave you a well, lot of support to make the manuscript. No, well, what happened was I was doing cooking classes, right? I mm -hmm. told you in Lexington. So one of the editor of Red Lightning, she came to my cooking class. Oh. I didn't know she was the editor of Red Lightning. That's it was, perfect. It was 2018. 2018 and she oh. was from Indiana and she was just visiting Kentucky because I think she her hometown is Kentucky. Yeah. Ah, okay. yeah. so, and then uh, and then she after the class uh, she told me that have you thought of a writing book and I was really excited because of course of course you I were have thinking, but, yeah. uh, uh, but I have I was broke at that time and the first thing I was thinking was I want to get out of this college debt because mm. uh, having a debt was for me again like a slave yeah. yeah, you know, it's yeah. like, uh, where is my freedom of like, I want to be completely free and design a book, cookbook, mm -hmm. not mm -hmm. just like you know, just design something real quick and give it to a publisher and he they will publish it and it is gonna be a bookstore. That's not what I want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that is not I was again meant to do to be honest because uh, I'm a very spiritual person, and then I feel like. Uh, back in my head or somewhere uh i have been i'm being guided mm -hmm. you know? yeah i'm being guided because i really also believe in my ancestors and uh, whenever like i have issues i talk to them or like mm -hmm. you know just connect mm -hmm. with them and ask questions like you know uh, am I supposed to do this? Am I not supposed to do this? I just don't do it. Like mm -hmm. it has to really come from inside. So when she said that, I was really excited and went home and I was like, you know, oh my God, I you, you guys don't know who came in my class today. <laughs> and uh, my father-in-law and mother-in-law, they are also very uh, admirer of art and they love my work already. Mm -hmm. The matter of, I just needed the time and patience, to be honest, to write mm -hmm. book. And I didn't have it because I already had a business going on and I was doing cooking class, catering, pop-up, so... When yeah. we have time, you know. Mm -hmm. But by the end of 2018, uh, uh, Charles and I thought that let's get married in 2019. Mm -hmm. you know? 2019. And then 
and then within a month we decided to get married just happened even that just happened we were not really it wasn't really whole plan yeah and then uh, and then i was again the, my head was really getting heavy because one part of me was telling me that when are you going to write your book oh my god like it's already like you know about to be 2019 now yeah. you you wanted to write a book in 2016 and then uh and the one part was like you know why well, you need to finish all your projects first cuz i already had so many projects <laughs> so you need to finish your project and then you start the book yeah okay now. but what happened was uh we got married and all of a sudden this was also like all of a sudden <laughs> next day <laughs> next day uh, uh as uh, because of my um status yeah my husband decided like you know we're not going to fly we're going to go on a long trip right mm. drive you know? so we decided kentucky asheville and then North to savannah yeah oh, beautiful carolina, yeah savannah, you know? tybee beach so we'll have north carolina and beach and then we'll come back yeah and uh, which i was saying like no we don't have to do that because we're really tired right now everything was rushing like you know we we're, we're so busy at that time oh my god like didn't even have time to do get married <laughs> <laughs> and then my uh, in laws were also like no you guys have to go today like today yeah, yeah today <laughs> <laughs> yeah and then uh I was like well I'm not going to drive because I don't really like driving so yeah. I was kind of feeling sad for my husband that you know uh, are you going to drive like 5 hours now seriously like <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like yeah I was like okay if you want to drive that's fine I'm going to start uh, maybe I'll entertain you with my recipes how about that <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's great <laughs> so, you won't, so you won't fall asleep you know So mm. I was like, you know, yeah, I'm going to do that. I was like very excited when he told me that. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> and then uh he loves driving as well. So <laughs> he drove and then I was just writing the recipe. Like I was really fast. It was just like, you know, it just has to go down in my paper really fast because I'm going to mm-hmm. forget all these things. I don't know like something mm. from inside me thought that If I don't write all this fast, my ideas are going to just disappear because, you know, right. ideas comes, ideas goes. So I was writing really, really <laughs> fast. And then <laughs> and then also asking, like, what do you think about this recipe? By this time, he already knows a lot of food and my you know, favorite yeah. food and things like that. So we're going back and forth and back and forth. And I was like, okay, first we'll write all the recipes and then we'll decide later what goes in the book and blah, 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 you know. And it's so weird that um I mean honeymoon was really fantastic because uh, I decided to cook for my own wedding as well. <clears throat> wow. Because again like you know it's like oh it was already uh, snowing and then by the time the food comes uh, we were living in the countryside mm. so by the time food comes here it's going to be so like you know uh, oh, cold it's a little old cold yeah, no. old, yeah. old cold I don't I don't want to remember that <laughs> So I thought like you know um this is uh, we didn't invite a lot of people just like you know his sister family and my sister family so it was just like a family gathering nice. so I was like I can cook for all of them I mean it's not a big deal <laughs> yeah it's like you know, it's not a big deal for me and then I uh, and there were a lot of leftovers so we also took the leftovers with us because we were nice. driving so we were eating really delicious food and <laughs> <laughs> driving writing <laughs> <laughs> that's so nice so it is really like it was beautiful journey and then oh, when we ended up in hotel we're more excited oh my god okay okay like, everybody yeah we're like, <laughs> so you did okay, it like okay. in a week in a that's week's time a passionate... you had all the recipes down oh. the, most of the major work was uh, within a week but uh, it took a really long time after that because sure. uh, when we we went for two weeks yeah. but then uh that thing got in my head so much that uh 
I was like, no, we need to go home now. It's already been one week. I can't stop thinking about this now. Can we yeah. go home and like, you know, <laughs> enjoy our uh, honeymoon and then also start uh, uh, designing my book because uh, I want to design right now. Yeah, amazing. That's fantastic. And you, and how many like, like beautiful photos in there of Nepal and like talking about um, – the landscape and the culture and the animals and the vegetation. And it really is such a beautiful, I guess, uh, art piece on Nepal. Thank you. And representation and of the culture. Representation of the culture. Nepal. Thank you. I can read her mind, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's yeah. Great. yeah. So did at some point you go back to Nepal then with your husband and take these beautiful yes. photos and integrate yes. it all into the whole book? So uh, after 2019, uh, I almost completed the book, let's say, like yeah. photography and designing wow. and putting it all together. But I still feel like this does not really uh, feels complete mm. because uh, 2019, when we get mar- married, uh, we had already decided that no matter what happens, mm. 2020, we're going to Nepal because uh, we <laughs> needed to do this grand honeymoon in Nepal. <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew the pandemic was going to happen or like, you know, things are going to change. But I was very determined that no. Uh, I've been wanting to go to Nepal for over a decade, but yeah. uh, mm. it wasn't happening. So I was telling my husband, I think only you can make this because by myself, I cannot make it happen. Mm, yeah. So please make this happen. We have to go 2020 Nepal. I don't know. I'm like getting depressed in a very different way now. Like, yeah. you know, homesick. Homesick, yeah. yeah. Homesick and the food that I really want to eat and also like well, the recipes I have already put in my book. I want to like come back home and then cook it and then eat it and then like, you know, taste the vegetables. Yeah. It's different there and here. Yeah. So again, like, you know, my husband definitely is genius. He made it happen. And I'm, <laughs> like, I'm always grateful for it. It was also very difficult even to come back because by the time uh, September, October, November, October, November, December, October, November, uh, there was pandemic and there was shutdown yeah. and this and that was like, I told you, I can't really make this happen. Just like pray <laughs> to whatever. <Wow. laughs> I have to go to Nepal in 2020. I don't know, uh, no matter what, because uh, somewhere inside me was telling me that if I cannot make it in 2020, I cannot make it to Nepal for a very, very long time for mm. some reason. Like mm-hmm. it was a very strong calling from the country, mountains, and Pokhara, where we are living right now. I yeah. have never been to this city, but it was really like a calling that you need to come right now, like right mm. now, right yeah. now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amazing. And I told my husband, like, you know, I never had this kind of calling from my own uh, country or this nature or mountain. Like, I don't know. I have to go in 2020, no matter what. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I don't care what happens in the future. But uh, I need to go there and uh, I need to understand myself because as a Nepali child or Nepali 30-some-year woman, I haven't lived my life in Nepal the way I want as well. Mm, Because when I was a child, I was living whatever like how my parents wanted and uh, when I was growing up I already went to this another country and another country and just like you know I'm I don't know I'm really happy right now so I think this is a great time to reconnect and just figure out who I was I'm supposed to be mm-hmm. sorry yeah, yeah. So, and then I'm sure like a mountain was calling really, really like, you know, it's like, oh, like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I was like, mountains are really calling and we are both mountain child in some ways. Yeah. So I think it we must go and 
you are also a very spiritual person and if you don't go to Nepal, how are you really going to also figure out yourself? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's a different culture. And just to know a different culture is one thing, but going there and living with those kind of people and sure. just like getting that vibration is completely different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we came here and then lockdown happened. Seriously? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You are now. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, we were like, that's fine. I mean, we were locked down in one of the most beautiful place on earth. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's gorgeous, like so gorgeous that I, I, to be honest, if I didn't have in-laws in America, I would have just settled here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's so gorgeous. But... Um, <clears throat> Uh, lockdown happened and then this book thing also got kind of shut down for a while because Mm. now I was thinking I was so dedicated for this book you know like you Mm -hmm. know I want to finish this because I it's already over a year then I don't know how long it will take time to find a publisher because I haven't even tried to find a publisher yet you know because I really wanted to figure out what kind of book I want to write first. Mm-hmm. Yeah. If you try to find a publisher, they will give certain time and you got to finish it within that time range. And right. uh, I don't want to rush, let's say, you know, yeah. I want to give enough time and reshoot all the photos that I'm not happy and maybe redesign again and again and again and again <laughs> until I'm like, you know, satisfied. Because this is also like my first book, like the mm-hmm. first book I have ever designed, not only the cookbook. So I had a lot of anxiety, pressure, I don't know, mm-hmm. everything. You wanted it there. to be perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> At least what I, yeah. in my eyes, like, you know, like, this yeah. is my work. And mm-hmm. once it is out, it's going to be out. And I'm already thinking that this is going to be my artwork because my friends are artists. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. friends are artists and they're going to uh, look at my work and they're also going to, you know, review my yeah. work. So mm-hmm. <laughs> I want to impress them as well yeah. in some ways. So um, the book was, let's say, was going to complete, but then I decided, you know, I want to take a break. This is, this is not, again, this is not right, right now what I want because this pandemic really, again, opened my another eyes or a different dimension that what if I don't live tomorrow? Mm. I want to spend the best time of my life with my husband right now. Mm. You know, the book is, to be honest, almost complete. So if I don't survive, the book is going to be out. Right. Somehow, (laughs) you know, somehow. (laughs) So let's enjoy our life right now. And you also don't worry about your work. No, yeah. just quit it. Like this is like uh, mm. enjoy our time yeah. because you've been working all your life, and I'm also working all my life. You know, we're both mm. very hardworking person, so this is not uh, we really want in our life. And maybe within this time frame, we might really discover what we exactly want in our life. Yeah, when you just like you know give up everything. Mm-hmm. So we started traveling. You know, whenever it was, because in Nepal, we had a long lockdown. Mm -hmm. I think the first year was uh, seven months of lockdown. Mm -hmm. But in between, the best thing was Pokhara is so mountainous and there's lakes and, you know, uh, so many hiking places, so gorgeous that you don't have to be anywhere. You just go there and hike a little bit on the mountain and there's a beautiful spot there. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of gardens and just like, you know, it was so... Like, I feel like, seriously, um, I was in heaven. Mm-hmm. <laughs> what what more do you need? Uh, there was, uh, everything was local. Yeah. yeah. Like, because the farmers was already growing. They are not going to stop their work. No. Only the shops are closed, which I don't care because there are too many of the shops that should be closed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know, uh, and there were a lot of hotels that were closed, which uh, it didn't even bother me. Which I was really happy that yeah. uh, because of the beauty of Pokhara, uh, there is a lot of tourists that comes here, mm-hmm. and there is no like there should be a control of like how many people should come right. uh, every season. 
because you know people want to go to mountain and you need to have enough space for everybody especially when they go to mountain but there is no rules so sometimes there are 50 people and there is no and there was only three rooms mm-hmm. so right. they have to sit in the dining uh what do you call hall dining hall hall. hall. like that so i learned a lot anyways uh traveled and then whenever it was open we bought a bike and then we started doing bike trips like a motorcycle trip oh yeah yeah nice my husband had never rode a bicycle a motorcycle so he was riding this motorcycle in nepal which is like you know we have that's insane yeah. Landscape. <laughs> we have best landscape yeah, because beautiful. in America, I will never tell him to ride uh, the yeah. bike because you have to ride really fast. Yeah. You know? But in Nepal, it's not like that. I think only oh. 22, 30 m. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You, you are mostly cruising yeah. around this beautiful landscape, and there are so many mountains and uh, and you can go to like you know really great spot by the lake and mm-hmm. beautiful mm-hmm. scenery. Yeah. So we went and we started traveling. Twenty twenty somehow we had no <laughs> idea, but we started traveling. Yeah. And then uh, by the end of twenty twenty, I started getting now serious. Like oh my god, it's already twenty end of twenty twenty. Now I need to find a publisher and yeah. put an end to this book because. Uh, <laughs> Now I need to get serious. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I had fun, but uh, now I think like I have to do something yeah. to make a living or, you know, this thing has to come out eventually. Mm. So uh, <clears throat> and then uh, when I was trying to finish the whole like, you know, real rock draft, let's say, mm-hmm. I started like, you know, oh, we went to so many places, right? And then... Uh, then I was already into landscape photography before I was in full photography. Mm-hmm. So what happened was so when I started putting the pictures, I was like, I told my husband, seriously, oh my God, like I think uh, all my pictures look really great in book. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yes. Because uh, I like, like you said, I already like landscape photography. So I was like, I think this looks really great. Why should it be only like uh, food? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's how like I wasn't really thinking all this, but it just happened again when I was look mm. cuz I have a lot of photos. Yeah. We have, uh, to just I have I think maybe 4 terabytes of um Photos. Four terabytes. <laughs> yeah. A Uh-oh. lot of pictures. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, Just a then, fraction uh, made it into the book. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I was going through all my photos and I was like, oh, I really love this in my book. And I was like, oh, I really love <laughs> this in that book. And then uh, my photo editing skill also came really handy, yeah. you know, which I always thought that, you know, how can you make money with photography seriously like you know i don't even know but i love this thing yeah and uh i uh, started editing and putting together and then um started looking for publisher and i was getting rejected and rejected because uh, i don't really have a lot of follower or a restaurant so like you know right. i wasn't a really a big name yeah. Yeah. but i was really surprised that uh, it's not about big name it's about the work and right. uh, it's really, I was really like, you know, so like you know, when you look at somebody's book, you can tell uh, right away yeah. that, you know, how the work is. And then there was a lot of rejection. And obviously at, at this time, I didn't really know about publishers. Yeah. And most of them were just like Googling, you know, just I was Googling like, you right. know, uh, book publishers and yeah. things like that. <laughs> And uh, uh, and then uh, I also discovered um, what do you call the person who finds the publisher? Agent. Oh, an agent, yeah. Agent, yeah. Like that's how I've discovered agent. And then there were a lot of agent. Um, they liked my work. Then again, uh, I don't have a lot of again followings now. Yeah. That was big problem i was like but i don't care about following because uh, i don't have time for that you know I, yeah. I, I, my, most of my time is in my work and also back in the kitchen creating 
yeah. traveling. Like I do a lot of things that you know most <laughs> of people who are just a content creator they don't do it. No, you know, because they're always like you know, creating like, content. Like, <laughs> yeah, creating content, and I was yeah. like, well, whatever. Like you know, I knew I knew that. Uh, I will find eventually. I don't know. I just have to wait, I guess. And then obviously my husband and my father-in-law, mother-in-law, they were like, uh, like some people wait five years, 10 years to find a publisher. I was right. like, no, I can't wait 10 <laughs> years. Like I need to write 10 books in 10 years. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> I need to find a publisher. I don't know. I cannot find it. Uh, then uh, my husband told me, what about that uh, editor who contacted you, remember? And I was like, oh, my God, yes, right? Uh, yeah. see, she's still working and if her email still works. <clears throat> and then I emailed her and then she told me that she doesn't work there anymore. She uh, moved to uh, uh, University of Kentucky Press. So mm. She was a director there now. <laughs> but uh, Kentucky, UK wasn't accepting any uh, cookbooks at the moment. Mm-hmm. But Indiana Press, I think, is they they are like a cook, uh, you know, some publisher pub- have like publisher a specialty. Are into, yeah, a specialty. Mm-hmm. So Indiana had this specialty and uh, and this also happened, oh my God, overnight. Amazing. So I wrote to her and then she wrote, contacted me back right away. And then uh, then when I sent her my, uh, like, you know, manuscript, let's say, yeah. she sent it to the uh, editor over there. Yeah. And then the editor loved the book right away. And then he sent me the uh, reply right away. Yeah. And then at this time, now, when I found uh, the publisher, I could not believe it. Yeah. Like, you know, I was really, sure. it's like a dream award. Like, it's like the winning was, the lottery. Yeah, it's like, like right away, right away, not even after a week. Like, you know how people yeah. are. Amazing. Uh, they take a week to reply an email mm-hmm. and this Love happens it. over time. So what I did was, uh, I was so nervous, like, you know, oh my God, like, you know, <laughs> found a publisher i can't believe this this is like you know this is like the best thing happened ever in my life that kind mm-hmm. of feeling sure yeah. and then right before i i got this i already had planned for my trek okay. to the annapurna mountain yeah and then you know what i thought i was like you know i don't want to sign it in rush because mm. i'm already excited about this my first trek yeah you know mm-hmm. <clears throat> And uh, two things happening at the same time, I just could not take it. So I told my publisher, "Can I can I come back from my trek and then uh, I will go there and then like you know think about it, and then when I come back, I will give you my reply." And then I'm sure the publisher was also surprised that you know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And but I didn't want it to. Uh, decide in rush like you said yeah i waited so long so i wanted to take at least a week to breathe and just be happy and just like you know yeah and then sign the contract and then uh we went on the mardi trek it was beautiful it was very again spiritual journey yeah Yeah. and Mm -hmm. i also made a documentary about it which Ah. is coming soon oh amazing yeah um what happened was uh 2020 was locked down, so there was no tourists. Nobody went to trek, right? Yeah. So it was all empty and all clean. Oh, Everything incredible. was cleared out. And then 2021, the first season hit, right, in yeah. uh, April. And I was sitting here watching the mountain because you can see the mountain every day here during yeah. the mountain season. So I told my husband, you know what, we should go right now because uh, usually there is no place to even stay. You know, right. I think it's empty right now. And then in April, uh, by the mountain, there is a rhododendron flower that blooms everywhere. So mm-hmm. I thought like, you know, it's going to be really good, just like, you know, yeah. mountain and this flower, like, and the trek is also not crowded. Yeah. And it's clear. 
then we decided also right away like you know yeah let's go i think this is a really great idea and when we went there there was nobody mm. <laughs> we were like scared. i was like Incredible. you know oh my god there is nobody like what if like <laughs> somebody is just gonna you know yeah i mean we don't have any uh like we didn't take like precautions and <laughs> but thank god like it was weird because every hotel we go we were the only clients wow because you know, we went like in the beginning and then they were also surprised to see us because they haven't seen uh any clients for over a year right so we were wow. like you know oh, oh i mean i was just living down in pokhara so i thought like you know uh i don't know when the lockdown happens so i'm just gonna come right now brother mm. <laughs> and they're also very happy and by the and after a week when i came down on the seventh day lockdown happened again oh, wow. can you imagine that? <laughs> yeah for three months so our life in nepal 2020 and 2021 was crazy yeah it was between the lockdown and like you know whenever it opens we have to make our travel plan yeah then i came back and there was lockdown so i was like you know what that's good because now I want to sit home and then reply to my publisher and then, uh, you know, I have to give a finishing touch, yeah. right? Yeah. Sure. And what really was missing in my book was mountain pictures, mm. right? Yeah. Which I wasn't really thinking, to be honest. And then, <laughs> you know, but then when I came back, I was, I told my husband that, oh my God, we just came back from the mountain and I have like, mm. I don't know, I took maybe like... 500 gig or almost one terabyte of picture. Perfect. <laughs> it's like so gorgeous. You can't yeah. stop taking pictures yeah. and videos. Like, you know, every angle is like, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and that's what <laughs> Nepal is famous for, too. Yeah, it's the beautiful the mountains. mountains. Yeah. yeah. M- Madam, what what you're describing is, is really interesting and it, it because it describes a kind of a process that then goes wrong but then becomes perfect (laughs) and so this is really kind of flow state and so it reminded me i have just one last question for you because it reminds me of when i'm making the momos (laughs) and i sit down and i make the filling the filling is going really perfect the spice the balance of spice is so perfect i'm very very happy with how everything is going and tasting i'm tasting Mm -hmm. as i'm cooking and then um, we have no flour in the house because my wife <laughs> is spiritually evolved. You know, <laughs> she has great spiritual uh, energy. So she, of course, she is uh, gluten free because <laughs> only the great uh, yogis uh, can die, or it's the opposite. You know, <laughs> yeah. normal yeah. people can uh, can digest gluten, yes. can digest gluten, <laughs> yeah. but not the spiritually evolved people. So. <laughs> no flour in the house. We have this coconut flour. It's like, oh, coconut flour can make the momo, you know. D- d- yeah. And I have a gigantic, as you said, four cups of flour for the momo. I have a gigantic mm-hmm. vat. You, it's the recipe says four cups. So, <laughs> yeah. so I have a gigantic vat of momo of coconut uh, momo flour. coconut flour. It does not work. Doesn't make dough. Does not yeah, make, dough. make dough. It makes yeah. And so <laughs> yeah, I have to. It's now I'm. Uh, I am what did you do with it? Did you make like cookies? I did. I <laughs> made did. a pancake. Well, no, he threw. That's we, we put the coconut flour away. I mixed it with some Korean pancake. And flour. then he got pancake see, flour. Pancake flour. And, and then now he I'm made like kind cookie. of a flat pakora. I made flat. Pakora. That's good. That's good. And so what I mean, do you, you have to be creative? You have to be creative. What do you do yeah. when everything falls apart? <laughs> And you're mm. cooking. How how do you adjust? In like you said, like like you made pakoras. Um, mm-hmm. Well, a I guess pancake. <laughs> it was a new, new advent, flat new parata, invented yeah. pancake, like a parata so, kind of. <laughs> parata, yeah. Um, well, when you cook so much in your life, I guess you already have a idea of like you know when the thing will go wrong. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah. <laughs> like when you told me coconut flour, I was like, "What? Like <laughs> coconut flour doesn't make any dough?" You know. No, I don't <laughs> but know like this. It, um, in the first situation, 
I also try to tweak it. You know, if mm-hmm. situation yeah. like this comes, yeah. if this thing doesn't happen, I try to make some other recipes because I don't like to throw my food. Yeah, yeah no. Like, you know, think about what you can do with it. It depends yeah. on what you are really making. And if you are gluten free, uh, there are rice uh, flowers. Go? Flour, not like literally like rice flour, but. Uh, like rice paper? Rice paper, exactly. Uh, uh, you can also like uh, use rice paper yeah. as an alternative. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. I mean, uh, you and then just fry it and fry oh, it. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah, It will yeah. be really delicious. Yeah. Just yeah. cut it in small pieces and then roll it and yeah. then make it like a pot sticker. Yeah, if like you're a pot sticker. Free, pot sticker. And if you, don't, if you don't want to use white flour, you can also use the atta, whole wheat flour. Yeah, it's really delicious. Mm-hmm. So as you're saying, you have a practice and you practice and practice, and then sometimes you have to be creative. But the more that you practice, creative. the more that you know how to be creative. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Especially with food, like, because uh, I started my practice, like you said, very young, and I did a lot of mistakes. And with those mistakes, I learned, what not to do next? Mm. <laughs> yeah. You are these, like <laughs> yeah, you have to you have to make some mistakes to learn what works and yeah. what doesn't work. Yeah. A, a lot of mistake to be honest, <laughs> especially when it comes to cooking. Yeah, and I'm sure like uh, I'm still learning when it comes to cooking. I feel like I'm still learning. I might have masters and you know, a lot of recipes, but there are so many recipes around the world mm. that uh, you haven't even discovered yet. Yeah. And that might be my favorite food, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> so what I usually do is when I discover some something when I travel, yeah. something like you know, a new dish, uh, usually I taste it and then I can tell like you know what ingredients might be yeah. in the mm-hmm. recipe. And then I go home and then try to recreate it in my own way. So ah, cool. you know, with with that process, I feel like I create something new. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, for uh, sure. And it has a different flavor. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I like it. Yeah. yeah. Most That's... of my flavors are very simple. Like if that food is oily, I instantly make sure that, you know, I'm not going to put this much oil. And mm. then if it is a spicy, I can't even eat too much spicy food. So, mm. like, you know, instantly I'm like, I'm not going to add that much spiciness or this much masala or, you know. Mm. Like, I don't really, like you said, I don't really follow recipes 100%. Mm-hmm. Maybe mm-hmm. that is why I never thought about cookbooks. <laughs> yeah. But then when I discovered the world, of cookbook, I realized that there are a lot of people who really need cookbook. Yeah. I hadn't seen that word, let's say, but yeah. uh, after living in uh, a US and after living different kind of life, I realized that a cookbook can change somebody's life like, yeah. completely. Mm, totally. Yeah. Depend- depending on how much this person really want to uh I mean, any kind of book, to be honest. But, yeah. like, you know, my my book is more like, you know, if the person really wants to uh, become healthy, uh, they are going to find my book. Mm-hmm. And uh, and if they want to also learn about Nepal, they would like to find my book. Or if something, like you said, coffee table book, where they can also entertain their guests, mm-hmm. they will find my book. Yeah. Mm-hmm. There is, it's... <laughs> Yeah, there are many reasons, many reasons to find uh, plantless Himalaya. It's nice too because often in India, a lot of the traditional Indian recipes uh, include ghee, and so if you want mm-hmm. to eat more plant based or you know not have any animal products at all in your food, it's so nice to have the vegan alternatives. Alternative, because, yeah, yeah. Many times people say, "Well, I don't want to eat ghee, so what should I replace it with?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I do have an ingredient substitution page. I don't know if you have checked it out. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There is an ingredient sub- which I also feel like, which uh, my publisher also uh, told me, like you know, <clears throat> yeah, that's a because a lot of things that 
I can find in one place. I might not find in right. somewhere else, like, you know, different state. Yeah. So you don't really have to use same oil or you don't really have to use same ingredients, to be honest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Learn, learn how to cook one recipe, just like learn the basics, then create your own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That is the whole um, plan of this book. Like, you know, you don't have to, because you don't always have time to go through the recipes. I get it. Like, you know, <laughs> like, what is what is that? What is that? Like, like you said, cooking is a uh, process. And yeah. like, you want to just like, you know, go with the flow and then cook from one thing to another thing. It's like a symphony. Yeah. yeah. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. So for me, myself, I can't really like, you know, always uh, go through a recipe and exactly cook the same thing. Yeah. I go through once and then uh, create my Your own, own recipe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, thank that. you so much for sharing with us your beautiful story. You are absolutely... And your beautiful cookbook. Just <laughs> gorgeous and so much light yes. and love yes. and i i'm very very profoundly happy that you shared yes. your time with us it was, it was wonderful beautiful. to be with you yeah i was uh, this was really very entertaining podcast to be honest <laughs> well, it was really a pleasure yes. to meet both of you i hope we'll keep in touch yes and, uh, absolutely too. if you would love to book from my book please yeah. <laughs> Please um try simple recipes like dal and rice and sal. This ah. doesn't even take thirty minutes. Yeah. And start with that. Then whenever you're in the mood, if two of you can work together, yeah. Mm. You can you can make like great recipe. You pick five minutes one and he can pick thirty minutes one. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like that. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I can do a five-minute one for sure. 